Hi, my name is Albert, one of the co-founders of VectorShift. Today, we're going to talk about variables and how to use them in the VectorShift no code platform. First of all, what are variables? Variables represent pieces of data, but when the pipeline runs, the data will replace the variables. How do we use variables in VectorShift? You can use variables within these text fields by using these double curly braces. When you type these double curly braces, it will open the variable builder. Variables have two parts in VectorShift. First, the node reference, and second, the output field. Let's go through each of them step-by-step. Step. The node reference references the name of the node. So for example, there's only one other node other than the OpenAI node on the screen, the input node. You can click the node name, input underscore zero. And the second part of the variable is the output field. Output fields can be found in the right-hand pane of each node. The input node only has one output field, the text that represents the output. What this means is when the pipeline runs, the input or say the user message or an input of data will be passed to the LM node within the prompt. You can see here the two parts of the variables, input underscore zero, which is the node name and text, the output field. A couple of notes. You can actually change the node name by changing the text here. So for example, I can name it question. And now instead of input underscore zero dot text, we have question dot text. You can remove a variable by clicking delete a variable uh, right here. Here, we actually get a warning message that I'm not using the, one of the connected input nodes called question. And it's telling me to, again, type the double curly braces in the input area. You can do what we just did, or you can actually drag this node in here and then finish out by selecting the output field. There we go. What are other common ways that variables can error, uh, just like what we just saw? Well, the other one is maybe you're using an output field or a node from a, a node that is not connected. Here, I get this red error that says, you're using nodes which are not connected, connect a node to this one to use them in your pipeline. So there we go, and the error goes away. Another source of error is maybe you're using a variable that is invalid. For example, maybe I will write input underscore zero dot text, and that's actually an invalid variable because there's no node on the screen that has the name input underscore zero. Let's go ahead and delete that. All right, let's go through another example with the knowledge base node. Let's drag it out. So the knowledge base node, as you can see, has the default name as knowledge base underscore zero and has two output fields, chunks, you know, the semantically similar information retrieved from the knowledge base and citation metadata, which is used for sources. Let's go ahead and connect the input node to the knowledge base reader. In cases where a node has only one output field and it's connected to another node where there's only one input field here, search query, we autofill the output field into the input field because that's the only thing that you could be doing, you know, is putting the output field into the input field. So we have the autofill here. Now, what if we want to pass the context to the OpenAI node? Let's go ahead and write context open the double curly braces. We want the knowledge base node now, right? The results of the knowledge base, we want to pass to the large language model. And here we want chunks, right? Not citation metadata. Chunks is the semantically similar information from the knowledge base. There we go. We can then write a prompt, answer the question based on context. And let's go ahead and label the first variable as question. And finally, Let's connect the large language model to an output node, like so. As I mentioned, variables represent data. When the pipeline is run, the data uh, overrides the variable, and then the node is run. So for example, the user message is passed to the knowledge base reader through this variable right here. Then the semantically similar chunks are passed under this text called context, along with the user message, which which overrides question.txt, which sits right below question. In this case, the OpenAI LLM will know that the, 
the question that the user has will be right under the word question. And the context from the knowledge base will be right under the word context. Now, all this data, you know, along with the system prop is then passed to, to the large language model and the response back will be sent to the output node and displayed back to the user. Thank you very much. Hope this tutorial was helpful.